In this video, we will learn the basic concepts and terminology of apportionment problems. At the end of the video, there will be links to other videos where we'll actually solve apportionment problems using the various methods. So a good example of an apportionment problem is the U.S. House of Representatives. There are 435 representatives from the 50 U.S. states. And the number of seats that each state gets is based on its population. So given a number of states and their populations, how do you determine how many representative seats each state should get? That's the basic concept of these problems. So here's an example. Let's say we had a nation with four states with the populations listed here. And let's say that this nation has a representative body that has 60 seats. How many seats should each state get? Well, the big idea is that if a state has 30% of the population, then it should get 30% of the seats. So first, maybe we should figure out the percentage population that each state has. The way that we do that is by taking the state's population and divide it by the total population, and then express the answer as a percentage. So let's do that. If we take the state A, which has population 74,285, divide that by the total population, 207,637, we get 0.3578, which when we express that as a percentage, we get 35.78%. Do this for all the states, and we get percentages for each one, and just as a check, we should make sure that they add up to 100%. If you do this and you get 99.9 .9 or 100.1, that's just rounding error. So just be careful to make sure that you're copying the numbers off of your calculator correctly, and don't worry about the rounding error. So now what we want to do is figure out how many seats each state should get. So again, the big idea is 30% of the population should be 30% of the seats. So if state A has 35.78% of the population, then it should get 35.78% of the seats. So we're going to multiply those percentage populations by the total number of seats. For this problem, that's 60. And that'll give us what's called each state's fair share. So for the fair share for state A, we take 0.3578, multiply by 60, and that gives us 21.47. So the fair share for state A is 21.47 seats. Do the same thing for B, C, and D, and again as a mental check we should make sure that those add up to 60. Now the problem here is that we can't give a state a fraction of a seat. It doesn't make sense to give state A 21.47 seats. And so the various apportionment methods that we'll study give us ways to get around this problem and give a whole number of seats to each state, but we'll get to those in the later videos. Here's something else that we need to think about. Another way to compute fair shares is to take the total population and divide it by the number of seats. That's called the standard divisor, and that tells us how many people each seat represents. Let's just look at an example. If the standard divisor were 3,000, then that means that each representative would represent 3,000 people. If a state had exactly 3,000 people, then that state should have one representative. If a state had exactly 30,000 people, then that state should have 10 representatives. So what we're seeing is that to find the fair share for a state, another way to do it, instead of using the percentages like we did before, is to take the population of that state and divide it by the standard divisor. Let's do the same example we were doing before using this new method and make sure that we get the same answers that we did before. So the standard divisor is we take the total population of the nation, in this case that's 207,637, divide by the 60 seats that we have, and we get 3460.616. That means that each of these seats, each of these representatives, represents approximately 3,460 people. So for state A, if we take state A's population, 74,285, and divide it by that standard divisor, divided by 3,460.616, then what we get is 21.47, which is the fair share for A. And that's exactly the same as the fair share that we got before using percentages. So this just gives us a different way to compute the fair share. We do that for all the states, and once again, it adds up to 60. Now that you've got the basics, click on one of these links to explore one of the apportionment methods in more detail.